We think that the federal excise tax, like the truck from World War I, is no longer relevant to the modern world. The goods that uh, make America move, they're shipped over the country. Uh, trucks do that. The lifeblood of America's economy, when we take that, that tax off, uh, makes everything less expensive. The kicker is basically the disincentive penalty of the federal excise tax adding on average $20,000 per the price of a truck to pay for a tax that was instituted during World War I. Okay? Now, an over 100-year tax to temporarily pay for a war, maybe it's time to take a real hard look and say, do we need to keep doing it this way? And so with uh, our legislation, uh, H.R. 2381, we're calling it the Modern Clean and Safe Trucks Act, we want our people to be able to purchase as they see fit modern trucks that run cleaner, run more efficient, get better mileage, have the, the newest and safety equipment, then let's make an incentive to do so and not have a $20,000 approximate penalty on the price to do it. So this 12% federal excise tax, the FET, is the highest tax of any taxable item in this nation. We've got over 100 Hill visits scheduled and they're talking to their members of Congress and their senators about the necessity of repealing federal excise tax on heavy duty trucks. It's our job to educate them so that we can make it better for all of us. Today is Saturday, February 15th, and it's day two of NADA Show 2020 in Las Vegas. We've got a big day planned. The Expo opens at 8.30 this morning. Join us in the Grand Concourse at the Convention Center for the ribbon cutting and tour the 2020 Expo with us. This is where business gets done. You won't want to miss what's happening on the NADA live stage right outside the Expo entrance. The stage features industry experts and guests sharing their insight and experience on topics as diverse as digital marketing. Good morning and welcome to NADA Live from the uh, 2020 NADA show in Las Vegas. I'm Jonathan Collegio and I'm joined by Michael Joe Cannon, the 2020 NADA convention chairman, and Charlie Gilchrist, the 2019 chairman of NADA. Good morning, jo uh, gentlemen, and welcome. Uh, morning. Michael Joe, lots of buzz about the show. There's an enormous amount of anticipation even here in the, in the lobby. Can you tell us about it? Tell us about the exhibitors and the workshops and what's going on today. Well, first of all, what a better time to uh, be in Las Vegas than Valentine weekend. Yes, right? exactly, yeah. Uh, but we got a sold out, uh, sold out show, over 700,000 square feet uh, of exhibitors. And of course, that's obviously where, where it all happens. Uh, we have uh, workshops uh, with uh, 20 NADA presenters uh, pre presenting. Uh, we've got 22 make meetings, and so it's just a, a great time to, to be a dealer and a great time to be here in Las Vegas. Exactly, and in Las Vegas, I mean, this is really seems to be the chosen location of where the dealers want to congregate. It's always our biggest show. Uh, same thing this year? Same thing this year. We, uh, we're, not, we're almost where we were two years ago, which was a record. 
and we were in Las Vegas. So, uh, yeah, the dealers love Las Vegas. And uh, like I said, what a better time to love Las Vegas than on Valentine's weekend. Right? Exactly, exactly. Charlie, you had a busy year as chairman, 2019. Yeah. Uh, tell us about some of the major milestones of, of what it was like leading NADA over 2019. Well, it, it was a uh, busy year. And when you plan on a year like we planned a year ago, things change. Tariffs were obviously a big issue. We fought real hard on tariffs. We uh, uh, dealt with the uh, White House, made sure the administration knew all the data that we knew. We did two studies to tell us the impact that they would have. We did get the USMCA passed, which was huge. Uh, a couple of initiatives that we launched last year was our workforce initiative in helping us recruit technicians and people to go to work for the dealerships. Uh, we think we've started that conversation and we're really proud of where we've gone. Uh, we rolled out our voluntary protection products optional template. It's a policy that we as dealers can use and implement to help us make sure that our customers can buy products that protect their vehicle in a transparent, compliant way. So uh, we, we, with the OEMs, we had 63 meetings with them stressing affordability, dealer profitability in the new vehicle departments, and then the impact on stair steps have on us on them and our customers. So it's been an exciting year. It's been a good year. I'm glad Michael Joe's here. I'm almost done. <laughs> <laughs> you got no, the runway. The, the, end right. is in, the end is in sight. Now, uh, one of the things people think about when they think about NADA is the government advocacy that we do. And right. there was a little bit of humility in your statement just there because you had an amazing meeting this fall, I think, with a certain, uh, some certain folks at the White House. Can you talk about that? We uh, actually got to meet with Vice President Pence. We were talking about the Military Lending Act and the impact that that's having on our warriors, our war fighters. Uh, when you can't sell them GAP waiver to protect their products in case they have a catastrophic event happen, it, it's, it's a, it really harms them and hurts them. And uh, so we, we got to meet with him. And as we were there, then we also started talking about USMCA tariffs. And uh, we met with him for almost an hour on what should have been about a 15-minute conversation. So. Uh, one of the highlights of my, uh, my career, uh, one of the things I'll tell you, he's got a desk, and every vice president has signed that desk. Pretty incredible to see. That's amazing. Um, you also, uh, you talked about the 63 meetings that we had over the course of the year. Dealer, uh, dealer Attitude Survey is a right. key initiative of NADA. Can you talk about that and the importance of it when it, when it when it comes to communicating with manufacturers about dealer concerns? Well, twice a year we ask dealers, all the dealers in the nation, to rate their franchises and we take that information and we meet individually with the with the OEMs and we spend two or three hours talking about the responses even the verbatims so if you actually write down a comment we, we won't necessarily show your comment but we group them together and we provide the OEMs all these comments and it's very impactful they actually look at these in most all of the OEMs that we, we talked to have started to really listen to the dealer's voice. We're not trying to replace dealer counsel, but this is every dealer can have a voice. And I will tell you, they're listening. Yeah. We don't always get our way, but if you don't make a comment, then they think everything's fine. So we need to make sure we are the voice of the dealer. Now, Charlie, you're, you're clearly a, a very big Ford uh, dealer in Texas, but you also have uh, GMC, right. uh, G GM stores. Uh, you're also a Chevrolet dealer. Mary Barra, the chairwoman and CEO of uh, General Motors, is going to be here on Monday right. uh, to talk. You are, to tell us about what you're expecting out of that. Well, I think it's going to be uh, a fun afternoon. Uh, we'll get to know her. A lot of people say, who is Mary? But she's a very humble person. Uh, she doesn't like the spotlight. So we get an opportunity to ask her a few questions, get to really see who she is. And I think it's going to be not only interesting, but I want to make it fun, and I want her to have fun talking to her dealers. This is really a conversation between her dealers and her, and we're going to get to know her. We're That's going great. to have fun. And the new, uh, the new, the new president of, uh, of General Motors for the North America, Barry Engel, Barry is, a, is a former dealer. He, ha has that been helpful in the, in, in the meetings that you had so far? Barry, Barry has been wonderful since he's been there. Uh, he was a former dealer in Utah. Uh, he, he is uh, taking this dealer attitude survey voice that we have given him, and he's really tried to implement it. Made a lot of changes already in a very short period of time, and I think dealers are very happy. He is really truly trying to, to decrease the complexity of some of these incentives, which is a major, major achievement. 
Uh, Michael Joe, uh, one of the key things that people come to the NADA show for, dealers especially, are the make meetings. So 22 make meetings. What can dealers expect when they go into those meetings? What do, what do they have to benefit? Well, you know, we always talk about communication, and, and to me that's not <clears throat> that's a uh, better time, <clears throat> excuse me, to communicate, uh, being able to hear, right, what a man, the manufacturers have to say and maybe what their plan is for the future. But it also gives us an opportunity as dealers to voice our opinion uh, or ask, uh, voice our concerns or, or to ask questions that, that uh, maybe we hadn't had an opportunity to get to do face-to-face -face with, uh, with the, uh, you know, the upper management. Very, very good. Yeah. Um, Charlie, a uh, little softer topic. Uh, you led a delegation of dealers to Nellis Air Force Base on Wednesday. Can you we tell did. us about that? Yeah. What a, what a place. And uh, I wish everybody could, could go to Nellis and see what our amazing airmen and women do there. And that base operates 24-7 around the clock practicing war games. And uh, it's just an incredible experience. But at NADA, two years ago, we were able to give them some money to help them reopen their automotive workshop. They had to close it down because of all the budget cuts to the military. We give them some money, they reopened it, and they call it their auto skills center. But all, all of the airmen and women can go there and work on their cars and, and make sure they can keep them running. And, and uh, so again, this year we got to go back, helping them buy some lifts and equipment. And I'm telling you, the smiles on their face are just incredible. But to be there, you know, we think we do a lot. You know, Michael, Joe, and I think us getting up early this morning to come down here and do that, that's a major <laughs> sacrifice. They do this every day. What they do for us in their achievements every day, it's truly incredible. Now, last year, uh, in your acceptance speech, uh, when you became chairman of NADA, you exhorted dealers across the country to get more engaged right. with their trade association. You said you are NADA, whether you are. you're a dealer or you're a technician yeah. or you're a sales manager. T talk about your vision for NADA and what it looks like looking back uh, one year. Well, if we can get, we have 18,000 dealers in our organization along with our truck dealers, 16,750 car, new car and light truck dealers. If we got every dealer involved, think how much we could do, yeah. how much we could change. And so many times we, we sit in our dealerships and think, I just need to sell a car or a truck today. Now, if I could do that, I'm okay. And you don't know what is actually influencing your success through our federal governments, through our state governments. So to me, I'm so much of a better dealer today because I got involved. I want everybody to get involved. And it's not hard work. You know, go meet with your, your OEMs, develop a relationship, meet with your state or your federal officials, get to know them, tell them what you do. Most of these people do not know what we do. They don't know what we do or why we do it or how we do it. And if they understood that and they know how much we give back to the community, then we've got it made. So I just want everybody to remember, I am NADA and you are NADA. And together as a team, we can accomplish anything. That's terrific. You're going to be the MC, effectively, of the general session. Are you excited uh, for your time up on the stage? Uh, yeah, I'm excited a little bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you go out, go out there and practice, it's like, wow, right? Uh, it's one thing to stand on this stage. Mm -hmm. but, but anyway, I'm excited for the opportunity, and I thank Charlie and Rhett for giving me the the opportunity to uh, to chair the the convention here, and and it's going to be a lot of fun. We've got a lot of great speakers, and and uh, it's an exciting time. It is excellent. Well, uh, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us this morning. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, continue to tune in to NADA.org for live programming over the next uh, three days, and also please follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter, where we're broadcasting a lot of events over the course of the days. Thank you for joining NADA 2020. All right. All right. See you. Yeah, buddy. Good job. Good to see you. <laughs> okay. We're going to have you do your opening, your remarks.